Podcast Restoration. Up this week, we've got a Matchbox number 62 TV service van. So you may have, rec you might recognize this from uh, one of my earlier mailbag videos. Um, this is a really nice original model that I was able to find. Um, had the original box. The box has uh, some obvious issues that we're going to address. Uh, we're going to get rid of all that sellotape on the outside and restore that uh, torn end flap on the model. Um, as you can see on the top of the box here, it's got the telltale sign of the original little price sticker um, and the damage that's there. I usually leave those alone. It's part of the history and the story of the model and I think it's kind of cool. Um, if we open this up, you can see that this model is actually in remarkably good shape. Um, the paint is great. It's uh, hardly play-worn. Um, it's got the original door on the back of the model. You see some of the silver there is a little uh, marred up and missing. Um, but one of the biggest issues on this model is the ladder that's on the roof. Um, as you can see, this one has been painted, I think, painted silver. Um, and these ladders would have originally been uh, a dark red color. Um, I was fortunate enough that this model also came with, if we open the back here, the three original television sets, as well as the antenna for the top, which has also been painted. Um, so this one is in good enough shape and it has enough of the original pieces that um, I would not consider restoring this model. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is just uh, do a preservation or preserve this model uh, in its existing state. We're going to try to address some of the issues and see if we can get the silver paint off of some of these plastics. Um, may do a little touch up on some of the silver on the bumpers on the original car. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do the box restoration. Other than that, this is a nice uh, survivor piece that we're going to try to just preserve and make sure that it lasts well into the future. Now, this is a restoration channel, and because we're only going to do a preservation on this model, um, I needed another model that we could actually do a restoration on. And I was fortunate enough to come across a model uh, that was an overpaint and was missing or had a, a severely damaged um, original glass piece. And so it, it really did warrant a full restoration. So I want to show you the before pictures of the model that I started with. So here is that same model and where I've got it to this point. So we've got the original base. Um, all I've done on that original base is just some touch up to some of the areas that were really scratched. Um, other than that, I've left the original base alone. Um, the, all of the lettering on the bottom uh, was still in really good shape. I did clean up the axles on this. I uh, used a little uh, vinegar to get rid of the, a little plain white vinegar to get rid of the rust on the axles. Um, but other than that, this is all original. Um, I really feel like most of the time, if part of the model's in good shape, I just leave it alone. Um, don't, don't need to mess with it. Um, the original casting for the body was in terrible shape. And so that has been completely stripped down um, polished, sanded out, and repainted. Um, and you can see I, I've gone ahead and uh, drilled the post there so it's ready to go. Um, I was able to order a reproduction 
um, windscreen for this. So I've got my my new glass. Um, I have the original uh, overhead door, the folding door for it. Um, and I did go ahead and order a replacement as well. Um, so as I get closer to reassembly on these, I'll have to look at both of those and see which one is uh, in better shape. Um, if I can clean up that original well enough to be used, I'd, I may just use reuse the original. Um, and then I've gone ahead and I've ordered a reproduction um, set of the televisions, the ladder, and the antenna on this one. So we're going to go ahead and finish the restoration on this car as well as try to do the uh, preservation on the original model that I have. To begin our restoration of the box, the first thing I'm going to tackle is removing this sellotape on this end. Um, and the method that I'm going to try is one I've been the most successful with so far on removing tapes and adhesives, and that is a little bit of lighter fluid. So I'm going to take just a regular cotton bud Q-tip, saturate that with lighter fluid, and as you can see on this edge of the box here, that tape is already starting to work itself up. So I'm going to get down in there on the little bits that are left that are still stuck and see if I can work a little extra on my table here. See if I can work that down in there. And see if we can get that to come off. There we go. You see, you really want to be very patient with this. You know, this is the the artwork right on the front of the box. This is one of the most visible areas. I really don't want to tear this. I don't want anything anything to happen to the front of this box. So just a little patience, a little time, and letting the lighter fluid do what it does. So as you can see there, we've got free from the front of the box. Now all I've got is this little bit hanging on to the end of the box over here. Work my way along there. That's actually a new one for me. You can see here along this box um, where the color is actually kind of been protected where it was under the tape and you can see it's kind of darker or more aged um, on the outside of the box where there wasn't any tape so I'm gonna try to just clean this up a little bit see what else I can get off you see how black that q-tip is getting and that's just the dirt and gunk just building up over the years on the end of the end flap of this box. So that's looking pretty good. So this box actually has something that I have not had to deal with on a lot of my other repairs. And that is that it was taped on the inside and the outside. Um, most of the boxes that I've tackled up to this point just ran a single piece of tape on the outside and called it good. Um, this one, they really wanted that repair to last which is confusing because they didn't really do that great of a job of lining it up on the outside here. So um, I'm gonna do my best and see if I can get that inner repair off as well. And I think it might be best to kind of just see if I can run a little bit of the lighter fluid into that crack and see if I can start to get that to let loose 
on the inside. Work ourselves underneath. We're starting to get a little something up. Yeah, there we go. So all I'm doing is just using the edge. The the glue in here is all dissolved. I got plenty of fluid down in there so the adhesive is all let go um, just need to get the the tape off all right so there's our torn end flap that's all let loose now we just got this last little strip of tape that we've got to get off of our original box And I think most of my fluid has started to evaporate, so we're going to come in and saturate this a little bit again. I think I should be able to start it right there. Hopefully you can... This is really hard to do. Yeah. See if I can get a little better angle on this. I'm just working that wet Q-tip right against the adhesive side inside that box. And as you can see, a little patience and just taking my time pulling on that. We've got that whole piece of tape completely off now, finally. We're done, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of rub this up and down just to get any any residual adhesive off of there and just kind of prep that surface for our repair. So that looks looks really pretty good there. I'm still I can feel with my fingers just a little bit of adhesive still on the inside. So I think I'm just going to keep going over that with my Q-tip until it, it'll feel kind of a uh, kind of slimy um, until until we can get it all off. But I'm going to go ahead and scrub out the last little bit of that. Make sure I've got all that residual adhesive out of there, and then we'll let the uh, the lighter fluid evaporate. You can see from the end flap, um, it's already pretty much dry from where we had originally um, saturated that to get that adhesive to let loose. So this one's pretty much already to, to go. I'm just gonna wait a few minutes and let the box go off. Now that I've had a chance to kind of look over all these pieces, this, uh, this end flap has a little tear uh, right right in here where part of the print is pulling up and so I want to fix that before um, I reattach it to the box. I'm going to use a little of the acid-free uh, line co-adhesive um, and I'm just going to put a little bit on the end of a toothpick and that will let me Kind of work that down into that little flap without. I don't want to bend the the paper on the surface in order to get that in. And then I'm going to roll over it at the other end of the toothpick. Get rid of any residual adhesive. Looking at the rest of the box, got a similar condition right here on the end of the box. I'm going to get a little more glue. Just very carefully work that between those layers. box. 
box. Now, in order to flatten that, I don't want the rest of that adhesive to squirt out onto the rest of my box. So I'm gonna take just a little piece of paper towel I'm going to put that in between as I fold the box flat. And that should now catch any of that adhesive as I roll it out. And that will fix that little boogered end. This is, this is actually the end of the box that's going to be exposed. So go over that once with my tweezer here. So that actually that worked out really well. That looks really nice. So those were the only two little issues that I wanted to fix before I tried to reattach this uh, end flap. Um, I know you've seen me use a couple different methods on the channel. For this one, um, in order to get the artwork and everything really to line up, I think the mending tissue is going to be uh, my go-to on this. So to start us off, I'm going to cut a little piece that's big enough for me to work with. I think that'll work. Get us across there. Uh, I am going to just eyeball this to start. And really what, what I'm most worried about is lining up the stripe and the artwork so you can see kind of where the original blue line was on this little flap I want that line to also intersect the line on the flap around it I've got this little piece that kind of comes up here and you can see the surface here um, there's actually another little tear right here that is where that little end flap is supposed to go inside and I may come back in with some adhesive uh, once I get this positioned. Um, and that's why I didn't want to glue that earlier when I was doing all of my other repairs. But to start this, I really am just kind of kind of eyeballing it. And if it looks good now, before the repair, hopefully it will still look good after the repair. So I've got my mending tissue, got the little strip on the end started. Um, I want to try to line this up, you know, where it's going to be across the box there. And then I'm go ahead and just press lightly at one end just to keep it lined up because I do want to double check and make sure that all of my artwork and all these little flaps are down and in position before I run that mending tissue over the top. So that all looks pretty good right now. And I need something a little bit smaller than my burnishing tool, I think. Um, something that will let me kind of visually keep an eye on where this is as I go. I think once we get it all done and everything is pressed down, then I'll come back over with the burnishing tool. Now before I burnish this down, I do want to come in with my little mini shears and trim off the excess. I don't need any more on there than just what I've got to have to make the repair. Um, I, I love these little shears because I can get in so close, so tight on the box. Make sure that I don't have any extra over that. All right, so now this is where the magic happens. This is where I get to take kind of the opaque mending tissue and burnish it down and watch it go translucent. I wanna 
give a shout out once again to a couple of my viewers who suggested that I look at some of these alternate methods of restoration and repair, especially on the on the boxes. Um, never would have found that material if I hadn't been pointed in that direction, and it really has worked out really nice on a lot of these repairs. So thank you very much. Um, and if you've been watching my videos and you've got uh, some ideas or something that you think I should try, please leave it in the comments. Um, I do listen to the things that people are asking me for and I do read all of the comments so um, if you got something you want me to try out please give me a shout out let me know about it all right so I've got one more piece uh, that I want to do on the inside here and you can see we've got another little kind of split paper flap in here I want to apply a little adhesive uh, before I do that repair and I'm gonna need the glue to dry before I top it with the mending tissue. So I'm going to add a little dab of adhesive down in here. Get that spread out. Get that press down, looks pretty good. I'm going to take just the edge of the Q-tip and just roll over that to get that extra glue up. Looks pretty good. So while I wait for this to dry, um, and this, you know, I'm not using a lot of glue on this. Usually it just takes kind of a few minutes for it to, to set up enough that I can do that repair. Um, but I'm going to set this aside, and while I'm waiting for that, I want to tackle or start uh, to work on these two parts. And the method that I'm going to use for that is one that I picked up uh, from Dave over at Toy Poloi, and that is using a little brake fluid. Now I have been tipped off. A couple uh, people have commented in a couple of Facebook pages and they've said using that will make a metal surface unpaintable. Um, and that has not been my experience. Um, it doesn't change the property of the metal or anything, at least not that I've encountered. Um, but in this case, both of these parts are plastic, so I'm not terribly concerned about that. And what I've done is I just put a little brake fluid into this little um, container, this kind of Tupperware container. Um, and that lets me reuse it for multiple, um, multiple jobs, multiple restorations. Um, and it gives me something that I can put my parts and pieces in. Most of the Matchbox stuff is not terribly large, um, so that tiny little container gives me the ability to put just enough um, out and on a piece, and I can seal it up when I'm all done with it, and I don't have to worry about the, the brake fluid spilling or anything. So I'm gonna let those sit in that brake fluid for a while um, while I'm working on the rest of the restoration. So the next thing that I think I would like to tackle um, in doing the preservation piece is to add back some of the silver that was missing from our original model. Um, to do that, I'm going to use my uh, silver paint pen. This is a Pilot. Comes in a two pack. There's a gold and a silver. Um, and I've, I've shown this on previous restorations, um, but I always used a, a small pen when I was doing it, or a, a small brush when I was doing it. And this time I want to try to use just the pen. So to start, these things, especially when they sit, they start to kind of uh, dry out a little bit. So I always like to get it going a little bit, make sure that I've got some ink flowing down onto my tip. And then in this case, I'm just going to use the, the ink straight out of the pen to do the touch-up here. I'm not even going to worry about using a brush. I'll come right around the corners. That looks pretty. 
nice. Get this side over here. And then these back bumpers really needed some attention. Um, so again, I'm just gonna use the pin and I'm applying this directly onto the model. And the pin really, it, it gives me pretty good control. Um, I've been really happy with these pins. I've tried a couple different kinds um, for the true chrome, I like the Molotow pen a lot, but most of these Matchbox weren't chromed. Some of the later, some of the super fast had the chrome accents, but for most of my uh, regular wheel Matchbox, it's more of a silver paint. And so I've always stuck with just these silver pens as a closer to original form. And I think that's gonna just about do it as far as the touch-ups go. Um, on the front here, the original casting has these two little nubs on the side. I think they would have probably been side markers or blinker lights and in my original casting there's a little chip in the paint so I don't know that those would have originally been silver but I'm going to touch them up to silver just to fix the, uh, the chip paint in that area. I think that those touch-ups on the bumpers actually helped this to look much better than it did when we started. Um, and I haven't really changed the original look and character of the casting at all. So that's, I think that's the line where a preservation is a little bit different than a restoration. Um, we're just trying to preserve those details, help them last another 50 years. Um, I don't need to strip this down and start over with it. So really happy with how that turned out, um, but one of the keys to making sure that it continues to look good is to let this dry. Um, and that comes into that whole patience piece, which I've told you all before, I don't have a lot of. Um, and so this is going to need to sit for probably a couple days at least for that ink to really set up and, and dry well. Um, it's not quite as bad as the Molotow pens. Those got to sit you know, a month or more before they're really set to, to the touch. Um, this, you know, a couple days, you're probably okay, but um, because that turned out so well and I don't want to mess it up, I'm actually going to set this aside and so I'm, I probably won't uh, cover anything more on this model to the very end of the video because I, I shoot these over the course of a few days. Um, so for now, just to deal with my own patience or my inability to, <laughs> to have any patience, I'm just going to set this aside so that it can dry. So now that our box has had a few minutes to sit, um, I am going to cut another piece of our mending tissue and get started on the repair for the inner flap. So again, we're gonna get a little piece. And this one I do actually wanna be a little more precise on how long I cut it because I want it to be able to fit inside of the box and it's a little more difficult to trim off once it's inside and I've gone over this before but this stuff really is kind of fiddly to get a corner separated and I usually have pretty good luck just with something that's sharp and pointy um, and I always want to try to prevent the, uh, the tissue from folding back over itself and sticking to itself and sometimes that is easier said than done. But we've got to start there. So I am going to, if I can grab that. There we go. And again, I don't want to peel this whole thing off. I've, I've done that uh, accidentally a couple times and 
this stuff really likes to kind of curl up on itself. So to get this started, I'm gonna come right down on the edge. And I wanna kinda of keep, keep my eye on not only where the end is, but where it's gonna be. So you see where mine's kicked out there, that's no good. I want this to be about half and half over that flat. So if I've got, got that started right, should be able to, I'm just gonna hold this with the edge of my bur burnishing tool, just to hold it down. And then I'm gonna slowly peel this off, going across the box. And that looks, looks like we're going straight, so I feel pretty good about that. That is just about perfect. Really happy with that one. That turned out great. And we'll burnish that down. And there we go. That is our restored end flap. I've got just a little bit of the mending tissue out here on the end that needs to be trimmed up. And again, this is where I really like these little mini shears because they can get down into those tight little areas and make sure that I can get that cut and trimmed. All right, so that looks great. Um, one thing you might have noticed so far in this box restoration I haven't pressed this box, um, and that's because I really didn't feel like I needed to. All the sides of this box are in really good shape. I don't have really any wrinkles or damage. Um, you know, a little bit on these end flaps, but they're end flaps. They're, they're not that big of a deal to me. So um, I haven't pressed this box because I don't think it needs it. Um, this all looks just fine. So that will do it for that box repair. Um, this one really wasn't too bad at all. And we've got really nice original artwork. And the, you know, this is the sort of thing, and I've told you this before, but this is the sort of thing I look for in a model that I can buy. Um, I know that I paid less than $20 for this box with the almost mint um, original piece with all of the components in it too. Um, it had a couple small issues, you know, the tear on the end flap of the box and the paint on our, uh, on our plastic pieces. And I knew that I could fix both of those. So speaking of our plastics, uh, we've had a few minutes now to soak in the uh, brake fluid. So I'm going to take a look and see how those are doing. Uh, this may need a couple of times to, to go at this and do this. Um, it really just kind of depends on what exactly it was that they used to make this go silver. Uh, this looks like it's coming off. So I think this is actually gonna work out really rather well. So I'm just using a Q-tip. It kind of lets me get down in all those little nooks and crannies. I have found that once that reaction happens, whatever the, the brake fluid does to the paint surface that's on there, um, the paint will continue to come off. So sort of as it gets saturated, I don't need to necessarily reapply or put it back in. Um, whenever that chemical change happens, it, it is gone it's you know it's just a matter really at that point of rubbing it all down to get uh, that ink or paint or whatever that is to get it to come off um, so this is actually looks like it's gonna work so this is obviously a bit of a tedious process and uh, it's gonna take me some time, 
to get through it, but you know, to have an original plastic on this, you can see this has a little nub from where it was attached to the sprue. Um, the other th other reason I wanted to really try to fix these is you can see there's a, a pretty significant color difference between the aftermarket, the reproductions, and the originals. The, the originals were kind of a, a darker maroon color red. And these aftermarkets are really bright, like tomatoey red. Um, so I definitely wanted to try to keep the original and see if I could get that dark red to come back out of this. And it looks like this method, a little patience and a little work, is uh, going to pay off for me. I'm going to give a shot on our ladder now. This has had a few more minutes to soak. Um, I'm just going to take our Q-tip right down it, and you can see almost immediately how easily all that silver paint comes off. I think a couple of these areas probably they look anyway like they just got on a little bit thicker. So this one may take a couple soaks to get really everything to completely let loose of the original plastic. I also, I'm trying to be really careful as I'm scrubbing on these parts and these pieces, you know. This plastic is already 50 years old, so I want to make sure that I'm not putting too much pressure that I might end up breaking any of these pieces. It's always easier to just put it back in, let it soak for a little bit longer. So, but that looks like that's going to clean up really nice as well. So, in looking at our original um, end gate door. You can see that it's got kind of that permanent bend in it from where it's sat and it, it, it actually fits just over the end of that piece. And you can see the little nubs that are formed on the back. Those kind of serve as guides to keep this on a track as it comes up and down. But you can see it's, it definitely has kind of a formed in area there. Um, and before I took this apart, uh, this end door was actually shoved all the way up inside, which I think was a pretty common problem uh, with these models, that the kids would push them up too far and then they couldn't pull them back down. And so this was actually sitting inside like this, which is where that permanent bend came from it. Um, and the original one is, is actually in pretty decent shape. Um, it is a little discolored. It's not nearly as bright white as the reproduction one. Um, but maybe that's one of the things that gives this away as a reproduction. Uh, the other thing is that this seems to be a lot softer plastic. It's a lot more malleable and it will bend all the way along the length of that. So I think the reproduction may actually function a little better going up and down. Um, but for me, the big piece here, the big decision maker, um, are the little handle pieces. Um, the reproduction has a nice, uh, very well formed, see if I can get that in focus, Let's see if I can get as close as I can. Um, it actually looks really, really well, um, and it's easy for me to grab my finger onto, um, and I think will be easy to... to raise and lower on this. The uh, reproduction, or the, the original one, you can see that end handle is just really mangled. Um, it's kind of worn on both sides. It's really hard for me to get a finger under it. Um, it's completely uh, chipped down and, and missing from this one side. 
Um, and so I'm still not sure whether I'm going to use the reproduction or the aftermarket, but um, I want to try cleaning up the original piece first and see what it looks like after we get it a little bit cleaner than it is right now. It's got some kind of a sticky type residue on it and I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm gonna give it a shot with my, uh, my lighter fluid and see whatever that stickiness is, if we can get that to come off. So the next step in uh, restoring this casting is to go ahead and apply the water transfers. Um, this original casting actually cleaned up really fairly well. You might notice a couple issues uh, in the paint. There's one little spot right here on the side and then there's another little spot uh, right up here. Those are actually not issues in the paint. Let's see if I can get this close enough. Uh, where it'll still focus. That's actually a little hole that's in the casting. Um, and I had tried to use a little glue, a little filler on that. And then when I wet sanded the first time between coats, um, that actually came out. So both of those are little imperfections in the casting itself. Um, it's, not a, it's not a mistake in the paint. So um, for now, I'm just gonna live with them. Uh, not all the castings that came out of Lesney were were perfect when they came out and I can live with mine not being perfect. So the next step is to cut the backing paper on our two water transfers. Um, I got these from MK Models and been happy with most everything that I've gotten from them. Um, but especially their, their transfers, they seem to uh, really be very good. I did notice one difference between the original water transfers, which were a rectangular shape, and my reproductions. My reproductions, it actually follows the contour of the, the words, of the letters. Um, so it's not a square water transfer. Um, which will, you know, from a collector standpoint, will always let everyone know uh, that this model is indeed a restoration. So, let that soak a little bit. I do also want to prepare the surface of the casting. Um, and this is just, this is just water. It's just a little container with some water in it. But we'll get that wet where we're going to apply it. It gives us a little more working time. I've noticed on these it usually doesn't take too terrible long for it to start to come loose. So I want to wait long enough. I don't want to force it because I can risk tearing the original transfer. But there we go, starting to come loose. So now I brought in my other one just so that I can kind of reference from a placement standpoint where everything lined up. So I can try to get as close to the original as I can. So it looks like our TV service came just kind of right above that casting line. And all together, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. trying to do is just soak up some of the water that was around there. You can see how easy that still moves. Um, and that's the reason to get that surface all nice and wet. 
before you place it down because it'll give you a little bit of working time on this if you don't get it lined up exact that very first time around it gives you the ability to still come in and kind of nudge it into place and I think if I compare those two that that is just about perfect um, so we're going to let that one dry completely before we flip it over and try the next one. All right, so let our first side is dried. I'm going to take a stab at second side. I'm almost half tempted, tempted to uh, put it on crooked. I know uh, the girls at Lesney that were doing all these, you know, had a few seconds usually at each model to get that set. And so a lot of these came out of the factory kind of close enough, but far from perfect, you know. So. I think that one looks good enough for me. We're going to call it set. I'm going to go ahead and remove these uh, reproduction castings from the sprue. Um, this is another thing that these little mini shears are really, really good for because it lets me get a perfect straight cut on the side of the casting. I don't have to come back and sand or trim or anything just a nice clean cut um, these reproductions I believe I actually got from uh, recover toy because when I looked for them from MK MK was out um, and these are like I said they're the wrong color they're they're obviously a reproduction um, and anybody who looks at the color can can see that pretty instantly. Um, also, the original castings were sprued differently. Um, it was more of a, a long, skinny uh, piece where these three were kind of oriented. I think it was something similar to that with a long sprue down the middle with these off of the sides. Um, and I've seen those come up occasionally. I'd love to have one of the original um, still intact on the sprue. That'd be, be great to have. Um, but for my reproduction, these are gonna be just fine. Um, so those are ready to go. This is my reproduction glass piece. This also came from Recover Toy. Um, you can probably notice a little spot right here on the glass. Um, when I got it, originally I thought, oh, there's a little piece of paint or something on there. And so I started kind of working at it from the top. I was like, no, that's not coming off. It must be on the bottom side. So I came down and I started working at it from the bottom side. And it's actually a little piece of black crusty something that is inside of the casting on this. Um, and so I've worked at it from both sides trying to get it out or trying to see what it was and I think these things are actually like a poured resin or a cast resin um, so this is just you know somebody's working dirty didn't get the mold cleaned out or didn't was using a reusing a cup that maybe had something that was black in it previously but there's a little black fleck inside of my casting so I'm gonna polish these up on my Dremel wheel and get it as good as I can, as clear as I can, um, and I may eventually order a replacement one of these, maybe from one of the other suppliers, um, but for right now I think I'm just going to have to live with that little fleck, that little imperfection in the casting. So here is our plastics, now completely cleaned up, as you can see the original antenna 
turned out really nice and all that silver paint or Sharpie or whatever it was is gone. Um, the ladder looks tons better than it did. Um, the only areas that I've had an issue with is if you look right where the rungs meet down in those little creases and folds there's still a little bit of that residual paint um, and I've gone over this and gone over this with my q-tips and I just can't seem to get down in there um, so the, the next thing I'm gonna try this is a, a little uh, soapy water so just this little container of water with a couple little drops of Dawn in it and I've tried the toothbrush method um, kinda taking a page from uh, Marty over at Marty's Matchbox Makeovers, um, but it really hasn't done what I wanted it to do. So, um, being a typical American, I'm going to try to improve on the Aussie's method, and we're going to add some power to the equation. So, I uh, snuck into my kid's bathroom and stole one of their electric toothbrushes. So, we're going to try that on this and see if adding more power to it gets us down in those little creases and crevices and gets the last of that paint out of there. did a much better job still have a few little spots in there but I think spending a little more time with my uh, super duper electric toothbrush here I think I can get those all spending just a few more minutes with my more power toothbrush. Now we have got almost every last little bit of that silver paint off of the ladder. And the minute little pieces that are left in there, I think I don't have a, any other choice. I'm just gonna have to go after them with my, uh, my dental pick here. And you know, like I said before, the, the chemical reaction in this paint has already happened. So it's done. It's not going to stick anymore. It's just a matter of removing the last little bits. The, these have all come unstuck. They're not, the paint isn't adhered to the plastic any longer thanks to the, uh, the brake fluid. It's just a matter of cleaning out all the little scraps now. So, if you don't have a set of these picks, um, you can order them. I've got a link down in the description for where you can get them. Um, I have not been, I wasn't disappointed with these. They were pretty cost effective, but um, these definitely are not actual dental picks. These are something that's made more for tinkering, stuff like this. Um, the tips of these are not hardened. As you can see, the end of mine's a little wiggly there, and that's because I've bent it. Um, several, several different things that I've worked on. Um, these are pretty soft. Uh, they're not something I can really get in and scratch with. Not, not like a real dental pick could. So. I always recommend, um, when I was growing up, my dad, one of his, one of his best friends, uh, was a dentist. And dentists periodically change out their tools. They have to, um, just to keep everything up and um, new. And so 
contact one of your local dental offices and see what they do with their picks when they retire and when they run them out. Um, because if you can get some actual dental picks, and typically these are really, really expensive if you buy the, the real ones. Um, but talk to your dentist, see what he does with his picks when he's done with them. Uh, that's where my dad used to get all of his. And those are, are still some of the best tools. So I'm gonna go over this one more time real quick. And that's just, we knocked it all loose with the pick. This is again, just brushing over it, getting those last little bits out. I think that will do it. Look at that, that is gorgeous. Original ladder, fully restored. Super excited about that. Got all that over paint off of it. So I am ready to reassemble my restored TV service van. And I think I did decide I'm going to try to keep the original in there. If I ever change my mind, I can always uh, pull the screw and take this out. But I think for right now, I'm going to try to work with the original. So I'm actually going to fit that on this piece. And then we're going to tuck it in the little tab on this end. And then I'll press it down on the other screw in this end. I think on this one, instead of color matching the screw, I'm just gonna go over it real quick with a black Sharpie, just so it kind of starts to fade into the base and kind of disappear. A couple little spots on the bottom that we can touch up the same way. And then put our reproduction ladder back on the top. Put our antenna in place, and then we'll raise the back door so we can put in the television sets. Slide our door back down. And that will complete our restoration, except for the last and final detail. And I wanted to wait until I put this together to do this, because again, this takes time. It takes time to do it. It takes time for the ink to dry. And so I want this to be the very last bit that I do. So we're gonna start, try to get this in focus. Here we go. Start in the grill up front here. And last but not least, our original model that uh, we did a touch up on the uh, front bumper and the back bumpers. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put in our televisions, close down that original back gate, 
I'm gonna put the cleaned up, restored ladder back on top. And can't forget the antenna. That's gonna go right up, right up there. So that will complete our um, preservation that we're gonna do on this original model. Um, and the restoration on our overpaint uh, restored model. Last step is just to put it all back together. And it looks like that's not gonna go in there with the antenna on it. So, remove that. And I think I will tuck it just like that, just right next to our ladder. And we'll put that, oh, put that back into our original box. And that is now ready to go into my collection. This completes the restoration and preservation of our two Lesney Matchbox number 62 TV service vans. Um, so here we've got our restored model uh, with our aftermarket or replacement glass in it, the new decals and the replacement plastics that we're missing. Um, overall, pretty happy with that, that model. Um, it, was uh, one of the easier restorations I've done. It's a single color and it wasn't difficult to paint match that. Um, the box was a, a really pretty straightforward. You know, the rest of the box was in remarkable condition. We just had that one little issue with the torn in flap and that's one of the easiest and quickest repairs that I do on these boxes. So, um, you know, all in all now, I've got a mint original in-box um, copy and I've got a restored copy of the uh, Rent-A-Set uh, version, or variation of the uh, TV service fan. So pretty excited to, uh, to finally have these in my collection. Um, very pleased with how both the, the preservation piece and the restoration turned out. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to click the like button uh, comment below, let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, what you enjoyed in the video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to us so you can keep up with all of our future videos. Thanks so much for watching this week. I uh, hope you enjoy this restoration. And don't forget to check back with us next week when we'll do another vintage diecast restoration.